Welcome back. This is the final episode of my mini series on looking into the new colors that Roma Small launched in 2020. If you don't know what I'm talking about in terms of a series, then I will leave a link up here where you can check out the rest of the series. This has been really interesting and it's been fun. So do check out all the other episodes as well. In this episode, we have a much softer palette, as you can see. And this is the more of what Daniel Smith would call the genuines, the Lazarite, the Vivianite, the Malachite, the Guac. I always want to call this guacamole, but it's not. It's the glauconite and the goethite. I know all of you are dying to look at the lapis lazuli because we all want to look at the lapis lazuli when any brand produces it. I think when we see lapis lazuli in a paint name, we, th we think of that bright, intense blue that we're used to looking at with ultramarine blue. And yes, you can get lapis lazuli that's that intense, that kind of Vermeer blue. However, it's very, very expensive. Using that much lapis lazuli, nearly bankrupted Vermeer because it is so, so expensive. So to make a commercially available paint, I think we just have to get used to the fact that it's going to be disappointing pale blue color. I have to say it's a lovely pale bluish gray. It is gorgeous as a color, but as a lapis lazuli color, again, it's quite disappointing. I'm pretty sure that we are never going to get a commercially available paint of lapis lazuli that's going to be that intense blue that we all want. So we either need to just accept that these are the kind of colors you're going to get from lapis lazuli or that it's going to be completely out of everybody's reach in to, to get that color watercolor i will leave a link down below to a video on how those really intense blues are made and you will appreciate why they are so expensive so i think it's time that we actually just adjust our expectations of what's going to be available commercially and widely available you get great level of water control but you, you can kind of not see it because they're so pale it's classified as semi-transparent and I would say, yeah, it's pretty much semi-transparent. It's non-staining, thankfully, and I would agree with that. It actually just cleared right off after just two swipes. So what I do with these lift tests is I get a clean wet brush, swipe three times, pat it dry with a kitchen paper and repeat that twice more. So it's like three sets of threes and after the second time of tapping it dry it was completely gone this is how it was after the second time so very easy paint to lift not surprising though because it's so pale in terms of glazes though for a color that's granulating and super easy to lift it's not bad you do see a little bit of difference between the outline and the middle bit from the first layer however it's not so noticeable because it's so light so it's kind of getting away with it because it's so pale in terms of color mixes it's incredibly difficult to get a good even color mixes as in a color mix when i say even color mixes i mean where a mixed color shows the characteristics of the both of the colors you mixed with so here it's pretty much yellow from the oblivion here is pretty much a pale pink with just a tiny bit of the blue and the thalo blue is just very pale thalo blue very very weak tinting strengths not surprisingly the lazarite is a color to be enjoyed on its own rather than mixing with other colors it might be easier definitely don't put it on the same palette as your queens and thalos keep it with your manganese and cobalts then we have the Vivianite, and this is a little bit more exciting in that it gets a little bit of a darker hue. It is, I would say, a greenish cool grey. It's definitely got that green undertone to it. It is classified as semi-transparent, but it's very, very sem like lightly tra semi-transparent in that I, I have to squint to see any deposit on the... It is non-staining and again i agree with that this was super easy to lift as well but this was after three times rather than twice with the lazarite in terms of glazing it's okay like 
you you're definitely gonna have that trouble because it is easy to lift and it's granulating i wouldn't use this say in a botanical painting because glazing is just gonna be a nightmare for you in terms of color mixes you see the effect of the vivian night more coming through in the color mixes than you did with the lazarite lazarite was just like this pale color you didn't even see the granulation whereas you can see the vivianite granulating here so if you want a subtle granulation then this might be an option for you then we have the malachite and this is a very beautiful color i think this is kind of the color that we would call the uguisu color and it's used in it's used beautifully in kimonos for the spring and it's a very springy color it is a pale green color with a little bit stronger green in the granulation and some warmth happening especially up here in the mass tone and the high mid tone of a undertone of yellow happening this is classified as semi-transparent and Anna would agree with that i see some deposit here and if you want to see the deposit or anything else on these test sheets i do upload the high risk scans of these test sheets over on my patreon which is patreon.com forward slash otto carno i put up all the test sheets over there it is again a very easy color to lift it's classified as non-staining and i would agree with that in terms of glazing it's actually better it's definitely better than the vivianite in terms of glazing it's less uneven on the area where the two layers overlap in terms of color mixes though it doesn't it's incredibly weak tinting strength like all of these colors are pretty weak in tinting strength so you're gonna have a problem if you stick it on the same palette as these colors however if you have a soft nice palette then you might get lovely lovely color mixes then we have the glauconite and i think this is the only brand that has glauconite i've never heard of glauconite myself before so it's super interesting in that sense it is like a muddy muted green color it's definitely not like as pretty and seasonal and beautiful and springy like the malachite is it's definitely more muted but it's kind of similar in tone and value they are in all in this pale pale color and i think if you want to create a soft palette these three will be a really good starting point you might want to put the vivianite in there and then add some cobalt violets and manganese violets and stuff then you can create a beautiful bit of soft color if that is the look you're looking for in your painting so this is a lot more muted it's definitely warmer yellowy kind of color again not a huge range in value because they are all pale colors it's classified as semi-transparent i don't know I'm kind of tempted to say transparent, but I do see tiny bits of deposit. So I probably can't say that it's completely transparent. So yeah, semi-transparent, fine. It's again, very easy to lift. They classify this as medium staining, which I don't know why, but it's incredibly easy to lift. I got it this clear after twice, just like I did with the Lazarite. So those two are the easiest to lift colors. However, in terms of glazing, it, it's pretty good. I can, if I squint, I can just see a little bit of unevenness between here and here. But other than that, it's pretty good at glazing for what it is. In terms of color mixes, however, it's very, very weak. I think it's the weakest out of the lot, or maybe, yeah, I would say comparable to the Lazarite. The only difference is the, this creates a warmer mix with the queen rose then the latter obviously because it's a warmer color but again definitely don't put it next to these bright bright colors keep it with your softer colors and finally we have the goethite which is nice because i love the goethite from daniel smith it's super granulating color and it's it's a yellow ochre color with a burnt ochre granulation which is really useful in landscapes and seascapes and things so the background color is definitely this strong 
ochre color let's compare it to other colors so this is an oak havana and i would say that the background of the mass tone is pretty similar in hue yeah th that is definitely the closest color in terms of hue so i would say if you have oak havana maybe give this one a skip because it's so so similar unless you are super into neutral tones and you want all the possible colors that you can get from it and then you have this burnt brown ochre granulation happening you get great control with your water and your gradation so that's a great thing it's classified as semi-transparent and again it's a very light semi-transparency i can just about to see some deposit this is by far definitely the one that has the strongest color out of the five that we're looking at in this video i would say this stands apart from the other four colors which are so pale and light in value in terms of staining it's classified as medium staining and i would agree with that it's the only not super easy to lift color that we're looking at in this video there's definitely some deposits but it's still very bad at glazing you can definitely see a clear dark patch here and a much lighter patch where the outline went down first. In terms of color mixes, because it's a yellow ochre color, it creates this nice, slightly muted colors, but it's also quite pale in tinting strengths. I mean, compared to the other colors, it's pretty high in tinting strengths, but when we pull out things like say the sap green light that we saw in a couple of videos ago you can see that it's still very pale and low in tinting strengths i would love to see if anyone creates a nice soft palette with these colors and other soft colors from roma small or other brands so do let me know if you do when you have quite whimsical pastel-y kind of illustration style these colors will be so much fun to use that's it for this video and for this series we have covered all 25 of the new colors i hope you guys enjoyed it please do let me know which out of these five you liked the best and which one was your favorite in total i'm going to share my top five colors and that's the queen fuchsia the potter's pink uh, the cobalt sea blue the perining green deep and the sap green light i think these five colors are the ones that i'm most interested in and you can tell from the fact that it's you know quite bright colors high tinting strengths colors this is my personal favorite do let me know what your top choices from this new colors up. i would love love to know which ones take your fancy thank you so much for watching this entire mini series i hope you guys enjoyed it if you have please do hit the like button subscribe if you haven't yet thank you so much for watching this series and i will see you in the next series bye